what is commonly understood as what invasive species are? Like, how do we normally define and understand what an invasive species is? And then maybe from there, we can break down how, you know, as you say, in the, the, the title of your essay, of your article is don't shoot the messenger. And the way you frame it is that in so-called invasive species, and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but we can get to this at some point. Um, but the idea is that these are actually indications of something bigger that's happening here. You know what I mean? So I just want to ask, okay, so for the very beginning, the basis of this is like, what do we commonly understand invasive species to be and what they do to ecosystems and bioregions and all of that? Okay, so there is the common idea which is not agreed on, but we'll, we'll say what we'll come. The common idea is that invasive species are non-native species. That is species that are somehow conceived to be foreign to a particular place. Right? That's not even agreed upon once you actually look at the practice of where money and policy is spent on invasive species. And often it uh, will be expanded to species that are uh native so to speak uh, to a place they're just deemed to cause too many problems uh, to whatever the the particular human project is going on there I think a, a, a better way for me to ground this would be to go through a couple of historical points um, that give an idea of where this comes from mm-hmm. um, yeah and so first I'll just mention that the I'm I'm not an expert in in the, all of the details uh, of all the cases of invasive species in comparison to some other experts out there. One of them being the Tao Orion book that I quote in the article, and uh, which which she herself notes um, that within the American context. Uh, it emerged with the Second World War and sort of ideas about having um, basically foreign elements that you want to evict um, from your particular territory. And then she notes that earlier, in the beginning of the 20th century, there, is, well, what you could effectively call pests uh, to do with, with the relation of expansion of agriculture and how to manage them. Now, that's a particular American... Uh, side to the story where my expertise comes in is to do with um, British colonialism because that's where my research the history of it is based in and in that context which obviously does have a relationship to the American context but is not exactly the same um, what you effectively have or well Cyprus is where my main research was based right so um, what you have there is in the late 19th century when British turned up in uh, Cyprus similar to many other places they colonized um, they brought with them a set of species that they liked um, to hunt which they would call game animals those animals would become protected along with a particular set of animals that they chose to decide were good wild animals the criteria for which um, is, is not something that I'm going to spend my life mind boggling how they selected some of the criteria for the, uh, these animals because they don't necessarily make any ecological sense. Um, it's you know, very arbitrary, um, which is a certain problem that still exists. But anyway, so you set aside um, certain animals that are good wild animals, good game animals and everything else. Um, is essentially fine if it doesn't get in the way of your pursuit um, of, of the pursuits of your empire or your of your society. If it does get in the way, uh, then you designate it as a harmful species and therefore it should be removed. In addition, what you get with a later development is that this becomes in itself um, a demonstration of the legitimacy uh, of of your environmental administration, showing that you're actually doing something. You're actually managing to control and manage uh, 
a territory in terms of the land. And so you turn uh, some of these invasive species into um, a scapegoat in, a, in and of itself. So it's now it's less about getting in the way of your own, own endeavours and demonstrating as an administration, whether it's colonial or whether it's a democratic environmental administration, demonstrating to your membership and your citizens that we are doing something. We're spending money uh, on protecting this environment. And it's a very easy and simple logic to say this species uh, is causing this problem to this one. And if we delete uh, this one, which uh, there's too many of or it's causing too much harm, then we'll have uh, more of the other one. Where my research went was into actually looking at the methods for eradicating uh, certain species and demonstrating that they didn't even work. Mm, um, yeah. So that was where I was going, was looking at it technically before then elaborating into whether it makes ecological sense, uh, whether it makes economic sense, and then obviously the political dimensions was first like, does it actually technically work? Um, and in the particular case that I was looking at, no, it didn't work for a number of reasons. It, in that case, I have usually uh, the most basic mathematic, mathematical logic you can think of, which is you deal with something as a population of homogenous individuals. So let's say there's 100 of something and they're all the same. So if we delete 50, then you know, next year, with, even with a little bit of re re reproduction, it won't be 100 again, right? So you're going to keep managing and reducing that population like that. Not unfortunately, but uh, fortunately, or however you want to think about it, uh, species don't work like that. They have different uh, ways of reproducing, different social uh, hierarchies or not hierarchies, uh, different social structures, which mean that when you remove certain portions of the population, you can actually end up with more of that species the next year um, for certain different reasons to do with breeding. Anyway, so there's a whole technical problem there. And then when I encountered, uh, when I researched it into this at a wider level, dealing with wild uh, boar, and then I engaged with Tara Ryan's book, and she essentially addresses that point, but more to do with plants in the US. And because I'm not a plant person, really, I'm <laughs> yeah. an animal person, okay. so to speak. Yeah. Uh, and her one like, maps into a similar issue which is trying to remove certain plants and just failing at doing it and some of it is really boils down to a couple of basic reasons one is it's just bad biology behind it so you have a degraded uh, landscape or ecosystem habitat um, which has already you know been polluted loads of species have died how uh, you know biodiversity has dropped However, it so happens that some species manage to do well in this particular niche, whether they're local or not local or native or not native, depending on what terminology you want to use. Um, and then these are treated as an invasive species, whereas in some sense, all they are is what is, are the first generation in a succession of species. So they're, So if you keep removing them, you basically go back to square one in what's e what's called evolutionary succession, because all that's happening is the the first uh, set of species are trying to lay down the framework on which diversity can then build. So if you keep cutting that back, I think there's a good example from New Zealand with gorse bush. So gorse bush was introduced at some point. Anyway, the government uh, gives farmers, <coughs> excuse me, subsidies to remove gorse bush. Gorse bush. It's a pioneer species, and if uh, uh, one fellow has demonstrated with a large portion of land there, that if you just let the gorse grow out and, and, and trees pick up, after 20 years, the gorse itself will actually disappear. But if you keep cutting it back, it actually will just grow stronger and stronger. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. so what you're saying is like what we think of as this, again, invasive species, which is going to take over the ecosystems and destroy all these other species 
um, in that process that's actually laying the groundwork for what you call biological or uh, evolutionary succession? Is that what you said that that term you used? Bio- I'm, I'm saying that in 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 many examples that is true. That is true. Okay. I I I I, I, I may sound slightly polemic in that article because I'm pushing back a very a very large status quo. Evidently, I'm aware that in each particular context, uh, there's going to be a, a slightly different answer. And that's why in the article, the unifying point of the article is to not do that type of science of invasive species are a, an, uh, uh, something that needs to be eradicated to stop biodiversity loss at a global level. And then we're going to send that down as a policy which filters down into certain subsidies that's going to play out in very odd ways. No, what you need to do is you need to form uh, you know, democratic committees of people within those areas that does include uh, scientists and other experts to work out what is actually going on here and deal with it in, within that context. Mm-hmm.